Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan Sims, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about capes from CG Hacks and how to use those in Photoshop. See you there. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and we've got this really fun image of Supergirl, and we're gonna play with some capes. Now, we have two different types of capes. Let me open up Adobe Bridge and show you real quick. We've got our clean capes, and our torn capes. So I'm gonna use clean first and show you with this image of Supergirl how we would use those. And then in a moment, we'll pull up an image of Batman and do some of the torn capes. So real quick, let's just kind of scroll through, give you a brief look at some of these capes. I've starred a couple that I think I'm gonna use for this composite. And then we've got our torn capes. So if I click on one, you kind of look at it, you see like there's some holes here and some, some rips and tears. Very, very cool. So I, picked out two of my favorites. Uh, I could find just one cape image that I wanted to use, but I'm actually gonna use two cape images and kind of show you what I'm thinking here. So I'm actually gonna grab this image and this image here. And I'm gonna take both of these images and I'm gonna drag them in Photoshop. And I've already selected where they're gonna go. Right now those capes are going right underneath my Supergirl layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter for that first one to let it load in. And the same for the next one. And let's work on one at a time. Let me turn this one cape image off and show you what I'm thinking about on this one. Now, before I do anything here, let me drag this image all the way to the top and just show you how I would change the color of this cape if I wanted to do that. It's already red, which is perfect for what I'm trying to do with Supergirl, but let's just say that you're working with a different superhero and you wanted to change the color of the cape. What I would do is just really quick and easy. I would just go up to the adjustments panel and just hit hue and saturation. And when that layer pops up, I would just click on this little box right here. That's going to clip the hue and saturation layer to your cape layer. And that way, anything that you do will only affect the cape and not the rest of the image. I'm gonna click on this little circle right here. And once that is done, you can mess with this hue and saturation slider and change it to whatever color you want. There are other ways that you can do this. This is just a quick and easy way to change the color of your cape. But for this video, I'm gonna leave it on red. So I'm just going to delete that hue and saturation layer, drag my cape back down to where it was, and show you what I'm thinking for this image. So this cape is really big, and so I don't want it to be that big. So I'm going to hit Control T, which is going to put our cape in this little transform box. And uh, I'm actually gonna take the outer edges, I'm just gonna kinda slide this in just a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And right where you see these little highlights on the cape, I'm gonna try to line that up with her shoulder line here. And so I might kind of take this outer corner here and rotate the cape. That way it kind of lines up a little bit better with the lining of her shoulder there. Something like that and hit enter because I'm happy with uh, the way that that is placed currently. Now if I wanted to maybe manipulate this cape a little bit further, one really cool way to do that is with the warp tool. So with your cape layer selected, you can actually go up to edit, transform, and down to warp and click on that. And you're gonna see this little box pop up that's gonna have some rows and columns. The main thing to pay attention to, basically these little levers here, you can kind of move them around and kind of warp your cape. But really, it's pretty simple. You just kind of click in the area that you wanna move it and then just move it. So let's say I want this to come up higher. I'm just gonna click right here. I'll just click on it, drag it up. If I want this to come down some, I'll click right here, drag down. Maybe bring this part back up that matches with the shoulder. So I'll drag that part back up. And you can see it's really easy how to use this tool. If I wanted to bring this up, I'd click here. I would just bring it up like that. So let's say that I'm happy with that. We've got a nice little lead in with the cape right here. It looks like it's really fluid with her shoulder. And I like that. So I'm just gonna hit enter so I can be done with that part. I'm not a huge fan of this little part sticking out right here. So what I might do is I might hide that. But the best way to do that would be just to select your cape layer, click on the mask and uh, with a black brush, just paint that part out like so. Now I could just leave it right here at that cape but I actually wanna make it kind of flow over onto this side as well. And so what I'm gonna do is I brought in this other cape layer, I'm gonna turn it back on and kind of go through the same process. I'm just gonna click on that layer, hit Control T to bring up our transform box 
and resize it. I'm just gonna bring it down over here on the edge, maybe move it back over here some. And if I really wanted to, I could actually transform it a little bit right here. Maybe hold the control key down and click on this little box on the outside, move it up like that. If I wanted to stretch it out here, I could, here at the top, all kinds of things that we could try with that. But once I've kind of moved it in the position I want to keep it, I'm just going to hit enter. Now again, I'm not a huge fan of this part right here, but we might be able to fix that. We used the warp tool before. This time I'm going to show you the puppet warp tool. And so with that cape selected, I'm going to go up to edit and puppet warp and click on that. And so this is a really cool feature that allows you to set anchor points and you can move those anchor points uh, where you decide to set them. So I'm going to put one right up here at the top. And remember, where, whatever anchor point you set, it's not gonna move unless you move it. So I'm gonna put one there at the top. I'm gonna put one right here at the bottom. Maybe one over here at the outer edge and one right here. And so I wanna move this up a little bit. So I'm gonna take that anchor and I'm just gonna drag it up like this. Maybe out just a tiny bit, something like that. And this part at the top, I'm gonna drag down. That way we don't have to see it which will affect the rest of the cape, but that's okay. If we need to, we can always add another anchor point and move it up as well. Something like that. Don't like that little fold right there, so I'm actually gonna hit Control Z to undo that. And if you're not happy where anchor point is, you can always click it, right click, delete pin, and that gets rid of it. And so I might move it up here at the bottom Maybe move this out a little bit more, something like that. That way we've kind of got like the end of the cape over here and then the end of the cape over here. So it's like this nice, big, long, glorious cape that's just flowing through the wind. And so let's say I'm happy with that. I'll just hit enter and there you go. There we have our cape. And so maybe if we wanted to make this seem a little bit more realistic, I could maybe add some shadows. After all, uh, there is light kind of coming from the top right here. And naturally, if there's a cape kind of blocking that, it might be a little bit more shady in this area. And maybe even just a tiny bit more shady on her as well. And so one really quick, easy way that we could do that is this uh, cape that's behind her. I'm just gonna make sure that that cape is selected. I'm gonna make a brand new layer by hitting Control Shift N. I'm just gonna name it Shadow. And I'm gonna make sure it's clipped to my cape layer. So I'm gonna click this little box right here to do that. And I'm just gonna leave it on normal mode for right now and hit OK. And so on this shadow layer, I'm gonna take my brush. I'm gonna hit B for brush, which is this tool right here if you wanna click on it in the toolbar. And I'm gonna make sure I have a nice black color selected. And really lightly, what I may do is I can uh, right click and control the size of my brush. I'll probably keep it right about there. Hardness at zero. Um, my flow, I'm probably gonna move down to like maybe 5%, hit enter. And I might just really gently kind of brush in just a little bit of a shadow right here make it seem a little bit more shady in this area. And I'm controlling uh, with hotkeys the size of my brush by clicking the left and right bracket tool. And I may even add some on this area over here. And so we've got a nice little shadow there. I can click it on and off. If you ever feel like you've gone too heavy with it, you can always drop down the opacity, maybe to like 85% or so. And then the same thing with my uh, Supergirl layer. I'll just go inside my Supergirl grouping that I have on my main Supergirl layer, I'm going to hit Control Shift N. Same thing again, call it Shadow. Click right here in this box to clip it to our Supergirl layer. Hit OK, and then just kind of lightly paint, very, very lightly. Just a little bit of a shadow right there to kind of blend in really well with the shadow that's behind her. And so you can see a quick before and after. It's just a subtle, subtle difference, but it makes a big difference. And if that's too much, you can always lower the opacity. Maybe start maybe like 80%, go down to 75%, something like that. And I think that's nice. It's just a quick way that we can utilize capes in our Photoshop composites. Now let's switch gears a little bit and move to this image of Batman and show you how I would use our torn capes. So I'm gonna go back into Adobe Bridge. I've already selected a couple of favorites. 
Uh, I imagine his cape kind of blowing off to the side here. And so I picked a couple of capes that I feel like would kind of envision that. This one and this one look really good because they seem like they're a little bit more backlit. And obviously because there's a bunch of fire back there, that's kind of the look that we're going for. So this one or this one could work. I may drag them both in there just to kind of see how they work. So I'm going to take both of these images, drag them into Photoshop. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, even though they're not in the right place just yet, but they will be. And so, yes, here they are at the top. I'm just going to take them, drag them down to right below my Batman layer right there. They're both kind of facing the wrong way. So I've actually got them both selected right now. And how I do that is if I just click on one cape layer, hold the control key down and click on the other, that selects them both. And so with them both selected, I'm just going to go up to edit transform flip horizontal and that's going to flip both of these capes in the direction that I want them to go so real quick I'm just going to look at one cape at a time I'm going to start with this one same as before hit Control T I'm going to play with the resizing of this image like maybe even something like that like I may get rid of this part right here but drag this over a little bit and even with it the way it is right now kind of being cut off I'm okay with that I don't have to have the whole cape in the image if I don't want to. So if I want to color grade this cape really quick, what I could do is I could actually go up to a curves layer in adjustments, click on that, same as before, click this little box right here to clip it to our cape. And what I'm going to do is with this little box selected, I am going to hold down the alt key and click this little auto button right here. And that is going to pop up this little menu for our auto color correction options. I'm going to click on find dark and light colors. And for shadows, I am going to click that and find what seems to be the darkest part of the image. Probably like right here in this area, right here, something like that. And you can see that the black start to kind of fade with the other dark black uh, spots of the image and hit OK. Same thing with the highlights. I can click right here. And maybe the brightest part of this image, like right in this area right here, click on that. You can click around a little bit if you want to, if you really want to see a huge difference with it. I may go a little bit more, more yellow or orange. Let's go with that orange right there because that looks like that just blends a little bit better. And I'm going to hit OK. Not going to mess with the midtones too much because it doesn't really do a whole lot to the image anyway. I could just click on something just to kind of show you. You don't really see a huge difference whenever you mess with the midtone so I'm just going to hit cancel I'm going to hit OK and it's going to pop up this little menu you're just going to hit no and just a quick before and after that's before that's after already blends with the image so much and so if I wanted to add some highlights to this image I could a quick way to do that would be to create a new layer control shift N. you can call it highlights Make sure you click this little box right here. And I'm going to leave it on normal at first so I can see what I'm doing and then I'll change the blending mode. I'm going to hit OK. And normally what I do is I'll, I would just take the surrounding colors that are bright, the highlights, and add them to this right here. So like, let's just say this bright yellowish orange right here. I'm going to hit my eye hotkey, which is going to bring up my eyedropper tool. Click in that color right there. And then what I'm going to do is hit the G hotkey to bring up my paint bucket tool. And I'm just going to click on that cape or click within this layer here that's going to fill it that color. And I'm not going to leave it that way. I'm going to double click on highlights. And with this menu popped up, I'm going to drag it over to the side so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. And right here on underlying layer, I'm going to take this little slider and slowly drag it across this image so you can kind of see where those highlights start to kind of fade in just a little bit like that. And then maybe hold the Alt key down to split this slider and fade it even more, real gradually. Something like that. And then I would hit OK. And now that we've done this, I'm going to play with the blending mode. So I'd click right up here and just kind of experiment. Overlay might work really well. Uh, sometimes Color Dodge looks really nice. Linear Dodge, Vivid Light, Hard Light. So really, you can just kind of use your best judgment on what you think looks really good. I like more of the yellowish orange, not so much the hard orange, but that looks really good too. So we could probably spend forever and a day <laughs> deciding on what blending mode we want to go on. But I think I might leave it at color dodge right about there. And once again, 
quick way that you can use capes and add in highlights. One other really cool thing that might be really neat is if you click on your capes and you wanna add a little bit of a motion blur to your image, you can actually go up here to filter, blur gallery, and go to path blur. And this is a really cool way to add a motion blur to your images in the direction that you want them to go in. So right now I can set a start point maybe right up here at the top of where the cape is on his shoulder, put my end point where the ending point of the cape is, and then drag this little center point in the direction the cape is going. And then I can add another anchor point and move it around, kind of like with Puppet Warp, only for motion blur. And if I wanted to start another one, like right here, and do the same thing here with, since it's kind of whipping in a different direction, click right there, and do something like that. And it's gonna keep wanting to add more. Just double click to get out of that. And I don't want this one right here. I wanna click it and hit delete. I'm gonna click this one and hit delete. I'm gonna move this one up and move this one up as well. And then from there, you can just see how much you want to add uh, to the motion blur. So I might take that down by half, like instead of 50, go to 25, something like that. Just to give it a little bit of motion blur and then hit OK. And so now we've added a little bit of a realistic motion blur in the direction the cape is actually flowing. So that's it. That is how you use capes in Photoshop. We have the clean version and the torn version, and I showed you how we would use those. We talked about adding highlights. We talked about motion blurs. We talked about transforming your image and putting it in the place that you want it, resizing the image, using the warp tool, using the puppet warp tool, hue adjustment layers to adjust your color, adding shadows to your image. So get in there, get creative, have fun. If you're interested in these capes, check out the link in the description below. And until next time, keep it real, keep it simple, and keep it creative.